Paul Long of Kappa Studios joins us on episode 50. Welcome to the Ministry of Motion Pictures podcast, where only the foolhardy and headstrong dare to venture. For within these humble halls, you may find your heart stirred to join the ranks of a Christian film movement to storm the world with God-glorifying media. But be forewarned, this undertaking will lead you down a perilous road of hardship and scorn. And so, if you're committed to pursue this life of woe, brave soul, I now leave you to your resolute guide, writer and director, Todd Schaefer. I thought we'd do something a little different for our 50th episode, so I hope you enjoyed our new opening. If you've been involved in the faith-based community, you will be very familiar with Kappa Studios in Burbank. Kappa began as a post-production house. And under the leadership of Paul Long and Brad Silverman, Kappa has become the post-production hub for Christian filmmakers. And it's growing into something much more. Kappa produced its own Christian film called Selfie Dad, directed by Brad Silverman. And they've launched a Christian film finishing fund. And just recently, they announced a new distribution effort. And Paul's going to give us more details about that. As you listen to this interview, I want you to pay attention to the heart of Paul and to the convictions that he has as a Christian pursuing his business with trust in God and faithfulness to what God has given to him. So why don't you tell me a little bit about Kappa Studios? Okay, yeah. Um, we um, have been in business since uh, November of 1983, and um, we came into business to serve filmmakers in the secular community, film and television people. And that endeavor involved editing, and uh, I started off in a very small office, and we just sort of grew from there. And as we went down and along the way, um, we added more and more services and got involved in all kinds of um, other kinds of projects, always secular. That was the way we started, just doing other people's stuff. And there were days where the projects were not great, but um, as time's worn on here, it's just really spiraled in a, in a very distinct and, and troubling way. And it's really, it's just, you know, it's gotten pretty bad. And so mm -hmm. and what I mean by bad are things that, I just cannot do um, without throwing rocks at the other guys. I'll just simply say that we um, want to do things that honor God and make his name great right. and give people hope through Christ and point them to God. So mm -hmm. uh, that was never my goal or orientation. It was just to make money and do whatever I could do. And so I booked in a lot of jobs. We did a lot of projects that I wish I wouldn't have put my hand to, but that's how we started. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was unsaved and operating a business and just, you know, do what, do whatever you do, try to, you know, mm -hmm. pay, make the payroll, make the mortgage, do what you got to do. So how did you become the faith-based go-to for, for post? Well, you know, that's, that is a fine question because looking back on that, it was the Lord every single inch of the way. Mm -hmm. And I, I laid down in front of the bus. I let the tire air out of the tires in the bus. You know, I, I did anything but uh, let the bus pass, you know, hmm. and I had a very, um, uh, when I came to faith, uh, it, it was through a circumstance. My, my, my wife and I were just having a horrid time and we just, just really having a rough time. And we went into biblical counseling. We had no idea what it was. And there was a pastor in there and he started to share the word of God with us. And we were literally convicted of our sin. We repented mm. and came to faith together in biblical counseling. Who knew? Who knew? It was incredible. And um, looking back on it, the chances, I mean, I, it was the hand of God. So that was one of the sort of earlier touch points of things in life and how it was going that really sort of set a, a course for us. And what I didn't understand, though, is for many, many years before, we had gone down on the field on a Billy Graham crusade. And I may have talked to you about this, Todd. I don't remember. But we, um, we he would say, we have come down. We have come down onto yeah. the field. There's room on the sides. Come down tonight. And we just went, oh, let's go. I looked at her. I said, do you want to go down? She's like, yeah, let's go. We didn't go down to repent of our sins. Mm -hmm. We did not go down because we were racked with guilt about how we were living. We did mm -hmm. not go down for any reason like that. We went down because I had never been on a baseball field. That's why we went down at a Billy Graham crusade <laughs> at Angel Stadium. <laughs> so the, tr 
It's a little embarrassing, but that is the truth. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, who knew? You, you couldn't write this stuff, but we just looked, hey, let's go on down. And the guy was very gracious. They were, they had people, volunteers wandering around in the field. And of course I was sizing up the outfield and just having a dandy out there. And he came out and he, he said, well, here's, here's our little thing, a little kind of, a, uh, I guess, um, a track of some kind, mm. which I did not read. Um, he was very gracious. He gave it to us. He did not say to you, hey, where are you going to church? Are you in a church? Where do you live? Let us plug you into a, into a church family. None of that. So we mm. literally checked the box of what you thought of faith. And we went on our way. Mm. Just let that sink in because that yeah. informed everything mm. across mm. our lifetime. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, looking back on it, it was very, very... Um, Sad, and you know, even that informed the way we treated our kids, the way I worked in business, the way I treated my life. Everything about my life was informed thinking I was a believer, but living for myself. Wow, that's hard to get your head around. I did it for years, brother, mm. years and years and years. And we'd go to church, you know, I'd see Todd. Hey, Todd, how you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. Hey, are you blessed? Oh, yeah, I'm blessed. Hey, brother, I'm blessed. That's that's the kind of silly, stupid stuff we did, but we yeah. weren't living for God. We live for ourselves and we told people we were interested in God. So there's this sort of a, um, intellectual ascent of knowing about God and all that. Yeah. But then there's the other side of the sword, which is saying, now I will bend my knee to you mm. and I want to serve you. And, you know, I was just looking up in revelations here. I was in the word this morning and uh, they're talking about something that was quite stunning to me. I think it was the sixth, sixth or seventh bowl was opened up. The angel opened it and they sent it to the sun. And it caused the sun to come with scorching, scorching fire. Mm -hmm. And it was scorching the people, scorching them. Mm. And they were very screaming out, having a horrid time. And it says there that they refused to bend their knee to God or repent. And it literally said, or repent. Right. So there's that place. So I think... If you're unchecked and you can talk about that, and look, those people knew who God was. They didn't, they did not live for God, but they were blaspheming God even at that time. Unbelievable. Wow. So what was the change for you? In the counseling session, we were shown our sin. And we, we had never really been pointed, it had never been pointed out to us. Mm -hmm. There's a whole thing going on in the church these days where, you know, let's give Jesus a test drive. Let's spin it out, man. See what happens. All right, let's do that. I'll try it, you know, or I'm having a rough time. I'll give it a whirl. That's what we were doing. We were consumers. We weren't worshipers. Right. So I was consuming. And so when you do that, it shows up. So the final, the kind of, I guess I'll call it, um, the final moment or the, or the sort of linchpin moment was, my wife and I were in a, a big battle over something. It was a, it was a horrid deal. And she says, well, I'm going in the blue room and I'm not coming out until you get into counseling. And the blue room is a room I painted blue. <laughs> what are the kids rooms? So she went on the other side of the house. She goes, that's it. I'm in the blue room. So, all right, go. Mama's in the blue room. So she did. And there, after a period of days, I'm, all right, fine, I'll go. But what that guy did is he started to show us our sin. Mm -hmm. And he started out saying to her, what are the things that you don't like about your husband. What are those things? What is he doing? And she started saying, he goes, you know what, hold there, come back next week. I want you to write down everything that you don't like about each other. Mm. So we came back. And when we came back, I had like three things on a piece of paper. She had like, she had a list. <laughs> Imagine a scroll. <laughs> she ran down everything you could possibly imagine. And so I'm sitting there and I'm, and I, he says, what about you? I said, here's, I got my few things. I, here's my thing. And so when it was all said and done, the guy said to my wife, he said, you are unforgiving. Hmm. And until that changes, nothing's going to change. And only God can change your heart. Wow. And then I'm over there going, yes. He turns to me. He says, you too. You're just as bad. Mm -hmm. So we saw for that grand moment that we were sinners and we were unforgiving and unkind to one another. Mm. That's what we found out. Wow. That's what happened. That's incredible. And that's how it started. 
and we were saved. It was it was quite an amazing thing. And that very morning, after I think I don't know, two or three more of those little sessions, I said to her, we used to drive in separate cars. And I pulled over here, I have your cars going two different ways so you can talk to yeah. each other in the driver's <laughs> side. We kind of pulled up. I said, hey, do you want to go to breakfast today? And she's like, yeah. And that's that was sort of the beginning. And the Lord started to stitch it all back together from there. Oh, that's great. So how many years ago was that? <clears throat> that was about 12 years ago, 12, maybe 14 years ago. But okay. uh, now think about this. Eight, 1980, was it 88? From 88 on to about 12 years ago, we were hanging around the church. And this is why we did Selfie Dad, because it's somebody that's in the church and just taking up space. Mm -hmm. he's, he's living for himself. And we wanted to portray that our film projects that we want to really deal with are speaking into the church right? and encouraging people to rededicate themselves, to become saved, to mm -hmm. say, do I belong to you, God? Am I just, and, and looking back on that, Todd, I, it makes me shudder to think had the Lord said, Hey, this is the day he would, he would have told me, go away from me. I never knew you. Right. I no, I talked about you. God, no, no, I would have been gone, and so it's a fearsome thing to think about. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the Lord is gracious. He allowed me to continue to live and my wife, and He brought us into that place of salvation. But it wow. came through repentance, mm -hmm. and without repentance, there's nothing. There yeah. just isn't. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. What an incredible story, and that dovetails back to your work, how God blessed you in your work. Yeah, he did. We um, we got, we, I started to get more of what I, I call now, looking back on a kind of a holy discontent. Once I was saved and I started to really realize, my goodness, I need to just serve the Lord with my business. Mm -hmm. Then the things I'm putting my hand to, it's like, well, yeah, I got to make the payroll and I got to get this done. And there's this and there's that, you know, equipment, things, you know, just the tyranny, the urgent and money and all that junk. Right. And as we... Um, as we navigated that, I looking onto that, I realized I was just unwilling to let go of those things because it was, uh, I think it was fear and pride uh, that were driving me and the love of money and all that. So in going there, I came to the place, I just got so bothered. My wife, and I just said, well, we're just gonna have to go out of business because we can't have it both ways. You can't play around over here. And if we're really living for God, it, he was, it, the Lord's just going boom, 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 boom. He was just knocking it around with me. He, I just couldn't, I couldn't, uh, the conviction was there. Right. And so that conviction is what started to change things. And I got to the place where we decided we're going to pivot the company. We're going to do it God's way. We're just not going to do it anymore. Mm. And I, I really didn't know which way that was going to go. Wow. And so what did that mean for you practically in terms of letting go of what you had been doing? Well, we, uh, we laid off about half the company. And there were some key, key employees I hated losing. Mm. Um, we lost a lot of money. People didn't come back. The whole thing just kind of got a little slippery, you know. Uh, and I just thought, well, okay, well, Lord, I mean, I don't, we've never had lower sales. It was just horrid. Mm -hmm. And um, so we started praying, Lord, would you bring us the people? Who are the people that we can actually work for? And at that time, because I was working in the secular community, which there are lots and lots of people to do it, especially yeah. in this market, there's yeah. plenty of people that are doing stuff. And, and I'd spent a lifetime building those relationships. I know those people. They call me, they do this, and they, all the things. I realized, my goodness, I don't know anybody in the faith community, really. Who are they? So I had to start over in business. We had to go on. Hi, my name is Paul. Have you thought about editing? Where, where you? I had to go through that. Oh, wow. But God, God just totally did this for us, Todd. Hmm. He answered that prayer in a mighty way. Lord, would you bring us the people? Who are the people? Hmm. And he did bring them. No doubt. No doubt about it. Now, where did Brad come into play in this with his film, uh, No Greater Love? Yeah, Brad Brad came and he was working here. He came with a job. He did it. We did a couple of films. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. No Greater Love was the first thing we did with Brad. And um, we had met him at church. We knew him from church. And um, he, my wife said something like, uh, you, you know, you guys need to know us if you're doing a movie. <laughs> She, she's a good salesman. Anyhow, uh, we, we, she's better than I am. Yeah, so she's just, she just was very gracious and, and they just liked each other. And he started coming for the film and we'd sit around the office and just, you know, getting, having a time of prayer, just talking about the Bible. 
the word of God I saw very quickly was important to him. And he had a high view of, had, he has a high view of scripture as I do. And so that just kind of wound us together in a real tight kind of way. Just like yeah. this guy's like a brother to me. I mean, I, I never had a brother and this is probably about as close as I think I could have to a human you know, earthly brother. Hmm. And Good are you time. planning on continuing to do more productions? <laughs> yeah, we have about six projects we'd like to get going, oh. but you know, what's happened, Todd, we've, we started to realize as I look back on this thing, there are three touch points. First, I had to come to God. Mm -hmm. Then I realized I needed to start to serve God instead of myself. And the serving of God, Brad and I realized was called the Christian Film Finishing Fund, where we help other people get their faith projects done. That's what we realized. That's what we need to do. We need to help them do their stuff. And so in and around that, we realized maybe we need to slow down and quit trying to push these film projects up we can get more projects out faster if we help do other people's stuff. Right. And we're asking the Lord to open opportunities in the future. But I just feel very strongly that, I mean, I've got a list of like 20 projects that I can knock down. What, what, who can do 20 projects in a year? Yeah, we can. And so as CFF money continues to flow in, God willing, if we get a certain threshold, I think we need like a million and a half dollars. That money comes in, those 20 projects get done. Mm. Now they go out in the, pro in, in, the, in the public. So setting those things up, promulgating a God honoring message. If I spend three years doing a film, one film, hi, I can only imagine. Yay. Well, that's fine. That's a great film. I love it. Mm -hmm. Underdog. Yeah. It's three years. Sorry. That's what it takes. You can't crack those things out very well yeah. and fast. They'll have a certain amount of reach, but if I'm doing 20 projects to their one, or 40, I believe we can get good, more good messages out faster. And each one doesn't have to be, I can only imagine. Right. There's good, there's better, and there's best. Those guys are the yeah. best. They're as good as it gets right now. Yeah, We don't need That's to it. live there. I'd love to live there. We don't need to. <clears throat> I realize right now God has me in the good and the better. <clears throat> Let's just camp in the good and the better and serve the people. Right. First, come to God, come to faith, then serve the people, serve them, serve God <clears throat> through that. And then the last thing is tell others about God. And that really circles around our distribution thing we just launched a few days ago. Yes. And that's tell others about God around the world. Mm -hmm. We didn't set out to do any of that, Todd. None of yeah. it. It was never, ever in, in anybody's mind. All, all we are doing is thinking about our own films, thinking, how, how do we get our own films done? Yay. Yeah. But I've realized the Lord will bring that if and when he wants to do that. Right. You know what I mean? That, that's kind of what I've recognized. Huh. Interesting. So where's the fun, the funding coming from for your film finishing fund? Is that uh, donations? donations. Hmm? Yes. People are donating money into this fund. It's tax deductible. And they can do it through National Christian Foundation, which is an incredible organization. I've been told that they have, one guy told me they have 19,000 accounts. Uh, somebody said 60. I don't know. The truth is somewhere in the middle, maybe. I don't know. But they have many, many people that have donor advised funds. And they're able to put money into those accounts. And then they can, at their leisure, for what I'll call worthy and meritorious projects or whatever they want to do, they can dedicate those funds around into different organizations of which we are one. So what I notice is when we let people know what we're doing, there's, there's never really, they're all like, oh, I get that. I mean, there's no selling or it's just, it's easy. Right. You want to get more good faith and family film projects out? Okay, well, let's go. I mean, it's, there's nothing to do. It's simple. So we notice when we let people know, they usually respond. And, and just giving monies of all different types. It's, it's been very gratifying and humbling. And uh, it's been incredible. And so that goes out that way. And then we can receive those gifts. And what, what we do on it is it's a 501c3 tax deductible posture or platform that they can give into. So if you go on to NCF and I have a link, you go capstudios.com, you go on that and then just click on it and it'll say NCF or giving or something. You can click on mm -hmm. that and it'll take you right to a page where you can do that. And we have people that are giving $50, $100, $5, $25,000. $25, I'm just all kinds of amounts, hundreds of thousands. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Hmm. And uh, it's, it's just like, wow, bring us the people. Yes. I love That's it. Right. I mean, do you have a common a common kind of person or filmmaker who's coming to you with a film that needs finishing funds 
to get it across the, the to the completion. <clears throat> yeah, I think the commonality is um, we have it kind of funneled down uh, where we are just really the people that qualify for CFFF, the Christian Film Finishing Fund, mm -hmm. those people are doing faith projects that point right. to hope in Christ, who is God, you know, things that are, and not we have to have a magnifying glass to find it. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be there. And so Brad and I literally pray over these things and say, okay, Lord, which one is it? Which ones will it be? And yeah. as money comes in, then we just keep reallocating and re reconsidering. And we've had people call, Brad told me, somebody calls and said, well, tell me the rules so I can figure out. He goes, well, there's no rules. The rules are we pray about it. You tell us your thing. <laughs> Not something for you to scoot around and try to, I, hey, I'm, I'm, am I eligible? No, it's none yeah. of that. And so we've just oh, done it through prayer. And, and, and that's hmm. kind of, I think, the best way okay. for us, at least. And do you, are you inundated with uh, requests? Submissions? Yeah, we get a lot. We get yeah. a lot. And now that we've started talking about distribution, it's... We get a lot of calls every day. You know, mm. something else that's happening. It's been very, very interesting. I'm, I'm, we're getting calls. I'm getting a lot of calls and visitations from people that say, hey, man, um, I heard about you guys. And I heard, I, I said something in one of the videos where I said, well, you're jumping off the roof. There's no taking it back. <laughs> I said something like that. You know, when, when we pivoted the company, you jump off that roof. There's no taking that back. You're, you jumped. Yeah. Yeah. And that, for some reason, got people pretty jacked up. But what's happening is casting directors, directors of photography, writers, directors, producers, they're coming here hmm. and they're saying, I can't keep doing what I'm doing. How did you break away? Can you, can you encourage me? And so we pray with them. We talk. It's just incredible. That is incredible. It's incredible. And, you know, we had a gal that is doing some, uh, all these horror films and things. And she said to her pastor, she said, would you pray for me? I'm on all these very dark shows. And he said, oh, I don't need to pray for you. You need to leave there. <laughs> <And that's> how... <laughs> Just get out of there, go home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but here's the thing. It's called radical dependence. <clears throat> what I realized we had to do, and Brad and I stumbled onto this. We realized we need to become radically dependent. Yeah. And that's back to the, that's the jumping off the roof thing. Mm. As much as everything in you says, don't, you will not pay the payroll. You will not make the mortgage. You will not, you'll have to go through the indignity of bankruptcy or whatever it's going to be. You're going through That's what you've got to get that place. And what I realized with this dear woman, she came and saw Brad and I, I said, well, you know, I think I just heard what you told me here. Your fear, your fear as it is at a level, but your convictions even higher. Mm -hmm. it's finally changed. Your fear yeah. was up here to the moon and your convictions down low. And as, and this happened yeah. to me, you get where you just go, I can't, I got to stop. Mm -hmm. And she said, I have a, a 15 month old little boy and, and he's a wonderful little guy. And I, the stuff I'm putting my hand to, I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine that he would see it. Yeah. This is what she's telling me. Wow. DPs bringing me directors saying, Hey, they're reworking the script on set. And they're saying, Hey, we're doing this now wait a minute, that's not what I signed on for. Well, take it or leave it. We're in production. Let's go. I mean, all this stuff's going on and I could tell you many a story, but they come and they sit in the office and they tell me it's pretty crazy, but the Lord is doing that. Yeah. He's giving them a holy discontent. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to look at it. Holy discontent. And you're right in the heart of it. <laughs> totally. And that's, yeah. that's why. And, and matter of fact, the girl was funny because she, her agent, she said to her agent, I, I want you to call Paul over at Kappa. And the agent said, no, they'll ruin your career, man. Hmm. You don't want to do faith films. That'll ruin your career. Yeah. That's what she told her. So she said, so I said, okay, thank you very much. She drove over here, showed up in the lobby. Who are you? She, I'm not, she's just right in the front door. Can I talk to you? <laughs> okay, come on in. <laughs> want to talk? Let's talk, you know? Oh, it was really is... incredible. But we've got many stories like that. And so it's very gratifying because I think the Lord is doing something there too. He's causing us to be just an encourager to other people. Yeah. Where, you know, and look, when you're facing down the mortgage, all these, these are all very real, real things. I yeah. don't want to be downplaying any of it. It's just what we had to say is, okay, Lord, you've got to bring us the people. You've got to bring me the jobs. You have to do it. I've been trying to do it myself. That's mm -hmm. where the radical dependence comes on. Right. 
And that's what George Mueller talks about in his book. Yes. I think it's called, what is it called? Release the Power of Prayer. That's, yeah, he has some, like three or four books. Yeah. If you have a listeners, have them listen to that. Check that out. You can get on a reading thing or you can read it in a Kindle or something. But get that. That is an incredible book. And mm-hmm. it speaks about the power of depending up completely on God. Mm-hmm. So that's my target. That's what I want to do. That's the way I want to live. That's great. I never thought that way before. Hmm. That was never in my mind. I, I had I had no idea you had this much behind you. I mean, just talking to Brad, I knew a lot about what had gone on and and how you guys got to where you were. But um, yeah. it's it's really nice to hear it from you and uh, to get your your I can hear your heart in the middle of all this. So that's that's very encouraging. So how yeah, does your distribution uh, effort work now? The the one you're setting in place. Capital okay, uh, it our our distribution effort is. Uh, the most idiotic, non-business, stupefying thing you'll ever hear about. <laughs> and, and anybody that's in business is like, what are you talking about? What You, you can't do that. What I realize is if we're going to do distribution, we're doing it different. Mm-hmm. And how will we do that? Here's, here's the thinking. Right now, the way distribution works, the distributors take all the money. Mm-hmm. And when all their bills and all their things are paid back and all the, everything that they want to expense is paid, whether you agree with it or not, then if there's any money left over, you will share as in a percentage share of that. I was thinking that doesn't seem very fair to me. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're offering the ability to share from dollar one. Wow. So we're going to divide those monies between the filmmaker, the investor, and the distributor. Mm. And here's and, and when the investor is made whole, the filmmaker's money goes up higher. The percentages go higher. Right. Why would I do something so moronic? Because we want them to do it again. Right. I'm not trying to make every nickel off people. And this is this is what we're doing it different. And look, we you may talk to me in a year and we go, hey, the whole thing blew up. I don't think so though, because I think this is gonna really change everything. This is going to jack some stuff up. People are not going to like this when it comes out and really starts rolling because it's going to allow filmmakers to get made whole, either completely or partially, depending on how their film performs. Right. But here's the beautiful thing. If they do that, they'll do it again. That's Mm -hmm. all I care about. I want to see them do it again Mm -hmm. because I can't do 20 films. I can't do 40, 60 or hundred, but they can. So the more of those folks we get cracking and if they've already found an investor or investors, that have got behind them and you restore those monies, some or all of them, they'll do it again. Hmm. If they're doing faith projects, I don't care about the other stuff. If they're doing this stuff, then that's, so that's the idea. This is distribution for that group, for these people go. That's what we're trying to do. So invert the paradigm, let them win and help them win. And they will do it again. That's why I, because I'm not interested in distribution. That was never my interest ever. We only saw this as, tell others about God. If that third link, God seems to be opening this up. I do not hear the voice of God. I believe his, his word is spoken through his word. And, mm-hmm. and for, this is my, my understanding of the Bible. So I haven't heard a audible voice or anything like that. But what I have recognized is, as I've read the word, I've recognized that we need to share as much information about who God is, the gospel right. message, as far and as fast and deeply as we can. Mm-hmm. So every day is, is, an, is one more day. We, got it, we just got to keep going. And so the idea is time is of the essence. The fields are white. We're in very deep trouble across the country, around the world. Yeah. Everyone would agree to that. That's not yeah. you know, unique to me. So if that's all true, we've got to get more good messages that bring hope and point people to God. And what I'm just like, okay, this is what I want to do. So that's why I'm not worried about, oh, we're going to do like every other. Forget all that. Do it so they can win and they'll do it again. That's all right. it's about. Hmm. That's really refreshing to hear. Because I know as a filmmaker myself, one of the fears I have is, okay, I finish it, then I give it to a distributor and I'll never see another dime. I got to get everything out I can at the, at, at the beginning of the film. You know, and It's think, very true. Yeah. Every, every, our town is held together by their abiding hatred of the distributor and, the, and, the, and what I'll call the naughty stunts that have been done. And yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we had we had a guy to come in and tell us the other day that uh, there were one distributor was going to um, Con and you know 
MIPCOM and all these different sales markets. He was going, and what they were saying is, oh, we're going to charge you for our expenses at this film market. So it's first class, it's this, it's that, it's all the best of the best of the best. But they don't just charge it to you and amortize it across me, you, and 10 people or 12 or whatever. They charge that fee 10 times to 10 people. Mm. So it's like, wow, that's quite an income generator. I mean, this is what they're doing. Right. So you're never, you can't, you can't get paid back. Yeah. But they will benefit, but they don't care if you come back. That's the right. difference. I care because I'm compelled differently. And I, you know, look, I spent my life chasing money. Now it's just, I'm doing it different and we're compelled differently now by Christ. Yeah. That's it. That's all that's changed. And so I figure if we can help more people get their stuff done, that's what we need to be doing. That's how I want to spend my days. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Well, more power to you, Paul. That's what a great testimony and what a great effort you're, you're involved in. I think this is amazing. And there's a reason that Kappa is the place to go for your now more than just post. So we'll, right. we'll, we'll hope that grows and, and, and see yeah. what God does with through you guys. Appreciate that. And, and you know, and one other thing I'll say, and just to, um, as a postscript to that is the, um, having the, the chosen come here and, and Dallas and all that was an incredible time. And, um, he was an answer to prayer and we've had so many of bring us the people. We're praying that Lord, bring us the people. Mm -hmm. He was one of the early ones that came in. And we sat, I prayed with him and talked to him for three hours. Mm. And I don't like sitting around doing stuff like it, but we did. But he's incredible. He told me his story. He told me, and that now what's pretty famous, how he came all the, over the falls and all this stuff and the wife and how they said, hey, man, just the loaves and the fishes. And he sat here before there was any big show. He told me these things that had happened and how he's realized, you know, it's just, we just, all you have to do, you take it, hold it up to the Lord, give it to the Lord and go from there. And he he just wowed me and inspired me in a mighty way that day. And we just, we just had a good old time here. And so we were ex excited. Brad took him downstairs to show him around the building because he hadn't seen anything. And um, he got to the stairs and he goes, hey, you don't need to sell me, man. I'm here. I'm coming here. And uh, he said, besides, I got a meeting. I got to go. And he, he would never look back. He split and came back. We've done all these shows with him. Wow. And uh, it was really incredible. Even the editor, he had no editor when he came here. Hmm. We set him up with an editor. It happened. The Lord had brought uh, Johnny, who's one of our guys. He was here. He's sitting out in the front lobby and he was wanting to come in and talk. He didn't know that Dallas was here. And he was sitting out there and he said, hey, I had, um, at, Dallas told me I had, I think he said five editors. He talked to five agents. And all of them had declined to say, yeah, we're not interested in your project. He was, came out particular to interview editors and hire one and to see what we had for post. That's why he came out here. Mm. And um, they all told him no. He told me that. I said, well, you know, I got a guy out in the front yard here who's sitting. <laughs> so they sat out at the conference table out here. They spent about 40 minutes having a geeky little discussion about, hey, do you like this movie? Do you remember that one scene? Can you know, And they're talking to each other, <laughs> having a great time. And, you know, they just had an affinity for each other. You know, they liked each other and, and had a commonality of uh, understanding and drama and the kind of thing. And he comes back, goes, I'm hiring that guy. I said, all right, let's go. Never look back. The Lord did that. Wow. He just totally did it. So that's, the, when you look at that, the, that, builds your, that builds your faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember when I was there and visited with Brad that you guys have that downstairs area and he was just saying everybody comes in here, you know, it's like the it's like the hangout. It's become the hangout for <laughs> faith-based yeah. filmmakers. <laughs> and that's what we want. We want them all here. We want them absolutely be here. Come take your meetings yeah. here. We <laughs> want them here. That's my thinking. And, and and the other thing too is it's a benefit for them not having to play around at the Starbucks and all that. Forget that. Just come here. Yeah. Do your meetings. And the other thing too is it, we've seen it where it really helps uh, filmmakers bringing funders here and say, well, this is where we can edit or here's where we're going to do it, and take them around. It sort of, it brings it down. It distills it down into something real. Because mm -hmm. if I'm sitting at Starbucks with you and I'm telling you, I got a film and I want to tell you about it, I'm, I'm you know, performing it for you in Starbucks. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is a very powerful thing. I realize the Lord's put us here too. 
So we want those people to benefit, let them use it in that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been a big advantage. Yeah, it's been big casting, pre-production. We do all that stuff here. Mm -hmm. Come bring your stuff. And wow. so that's it. We want you to be here. And yeah, you come, and that's, I'm sure Brad told you, if you're in town, come over, do your meetings here. Oh, that's yeah, that's really what we're cool. interested in because we believe that's building the family of faith and filmmaking. Paul, thank you so much for, for taking your time and, and sharing this incredible story with us. And we wish you Godspeed and God's blessing on your, your future efforts with your projects. That's great, Todd. Great to be with you. In the show notes, I've included links to Kappa Studios, their film Selfie Dad, and a very interesting video where Paul explains more about how God worked in his life to transform him and Kappa Studios. Our time together draws to a close, valiant filmmaker. We trust your heart has been warmed and your soul nourished. Your host has been Todd Schaefer, creative director of the faith-based independent production house Glorious Films and animation director at Tonic DNA, where he toils on productions for the major Hollywood establishment. If you wish to support the work of the ministry or simply buy your overworked host a fancy $5 coffee to keep him warm and caffeinated as he pecks out his next script, you can do so on our website at ministryofmotionpictures.org. Again, that's ministryofmotionpictures.org. And you can help spread the word by feeding the algorithms when you share, like, link, follow, subscribe... Or leave a nasty comment on our social media. Until we see you again, I adjure you in the name of our Lord. Go forth and boldly create film. What are we doing live? Echoes in eternity.